So uh, I gave you a lot of examples that why we need to <coughs> study statistical mechanics. These are some of the my students make the funny cartoon, and uh, they're quite artistic actually. Uh, but not all of them are. the most funny, you know, or most humorous, but they somehow get a little bit of the thing in. And this is my always, uh, my most favorite, uh, one of the most favorite quote from Sherlock Holmes. Now, uh, I already talked to you and told you that why one should uh, read statistical mechanics, mm. that there are a huge number of uh, phenomena that, you know, the real world, what we call them as a correlated systems. That means the molecules know each other. And uh, they know each other and they talk with each other and to describe the phenomena, collective phenomena, we need to, uh, we need to, do I have to stick that thing in? Okay. <coughs> this guy appears to be slightly more stable than the last guy, no? take an ex concrete example before we start on this today's uh, brief discourse on uh, essential mathematics. So let us consider a case that <coughs> a liquid going into a crystal. Let us take the simplest system which is the noble gas where you have molecules can be uh, represented as spheres, like argon, uh, krypton, all of them go into solid phase, crystal phase. Let us take specifically the case of argon, which is most studied. <coughs> argon is molecules can be considered spheres and they go to phase center cubic lattice. There is also the question why it goes to phase center cubic lattice. It has a phase diagram. <coughs> which is very rich, you know, remember when you talk of, this is something we ask uh, in our, <coughs> I don't know whether you were asked, but we ask in our PhD interview, the Pilarius results, sorry, solid, liquid, gas, <coughs> critical point triple point, okay. This is a simple one component system phase diagram also. So the, the one we are considering is this line, this coexistence. Along the coexistence, many things changes. Along the coexistence, not only pressure changes, but the fractional density change. Fractional density from a liquid to solid. In this case, density increases. That increases. Uh, that decreases and a, uh, it's also a function of temperature which is not shown here but this should be this way that indeed changes so one would like to know what is the reason for these changes and how can we predict these transition parameters now there's a really important rule that uh, these are we might not forward freezing <coughs> we might not get time to do freezing but we certainly would like to know about it and talk about it. So there is a very interesting rule people found out. See, much of the progress in this field happened after neutron scattering, you know, the beam lines and everything was available and that were available after the Second World War. So they became, all the experiments started, uh, and results started coming in 1950s. For us, that was not to uh, distant past for you is of course very far and then the neutron scattering they find something which you might or might not have heard called structure factor 
that is also one gets in x-ray structure factor in x-ray are sharp lines you know that na that means if you do an x-ray through that then you find the scatter at the planes and they are sharp lines one of the signature of a crystalline solid the existence of those sharp lines liquid don't do that liquid gives some the broad spectrum so this is a very important thing which you actually people should know by now by this time you should have known that actually so if i plot the structure factor is a obtained by cross section of neutron scattering liquid i find something like that this is what becomes these are the ones which becomes sharp lines in the crystal have you heard of reciprocal lattice vectors huh we heard in bsc third year in calcutta in 1970s reciprocal lattice vectors i always think the integrated phd has not been taught well at all that i see in my students also uh, but that's okay so uh, this um, this peak this this peak which goes on to become uh, the sharp peaks in uh, x-ray refraction the back williams and all these kind of laws of divi waller factor however one great rule was in, uh, discovered by a person french person called bardi called bardi rule sometimes called hansen bardi rule he formulated the rule from lot of observations that when a liquid goes into crystal then the value of the first peak here is 2.85 so sk has to reach a value 2.85 to uh, liquid to go into crystal there is a phenomenological observation and that played, played an extremely important role in our subsequent development of the field in the, in this in this in this area so now let us look this is the structure factor structure factor these thing tells this peak arises because that molecules are strongly correlated this is the sigma is the molecular diameter then this is happens at 2 pi sigma this is a wave number because it is scattering see old days all the experiments were done in wave number and frequency plane do you know why over the years only experiments were done using either wave number or frequency now we are doing real imaging we are looking at real time and looking at real space because of optical microscope and many are laser spectroscopy but for many many years almost uh, till 1970 or 1980 this from 1980 70 or so this 100 years we did only frequency and wave number dependent studies why is that you guys gave the answer last time maybe i should give you some chocolates in the beginning of the class I'd rather give it to bring some energy out why for years and years before electron microscope came see this is indian institute of science you know we hopefully do not just teach like other places so at the end of the day we are not too sure of the product but that's not probably your fault fault of the system that you were smart enough to know that and figure out that okay the reason is that when you change the frequency they will get absorption spectrum by varying the frequency we could get what are the energy levels in the system and energy levels tell us about the material very important information about the material similarly wave number is the exchange of momentum and you go and exchange momentum with the system so it's a scattering so in order to get a response you need to perturb the system okay and the perturbations were given in the frequency by giving energy and the perturbation was given in the momentum to the wave number k what is the energy of a beam of wave number k that is h square k square by 2m <coughs> okay you know h square k square 2m if you do quantum mechanics well these things are uh, taught in quantum mechanics because that is comes from p square 
ओके ने पीस द मोमेंटम सो द हाले रूल वाज द दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट्स वाज डन टू अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ लिक्विड्स एंड दे फाउंड दैट दिस इज 2.85 इज द मैजिक नंबर एंड दिस पीक कम्स एट 2 पाई सिग्मा दैट मींस वेव नंबर्स आर दैट ऑफ nearest neighbor so in in this course i'll give you many many informations about the systems and their characteristics and i'll try to then uh, develop uh, understanding of them so these molecules are short peak means there is a short range order that means molecules are arranged at a given distance and the, the, and they exchange momentum with this 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 length scale what does that mean that mean in a liquid like argon this is also true for water and every liquid there is a short range order and that is there is a short range correlation this short range correlation is the one that means given one particle here one molecule here there is a distinctly higher probability of getting another molecule at a distance things so it's a condition conditional probability that my condition is that i put one molecule at the center then there are molecules at this distance here at sigma and then there is nothing then again a near second neighbor so in order to understand this you immediately need the concept of probability and comes the conditional probability and then the something like the ideal distribution function which we will uh, 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 talk about at some stage so um, the study of the natural phenomena is the that of a correlation uh, study of statistical mechanics is study of correlation hmm. uh, as i said specifically the energy fluctuation compressibility is volume fluctuations now what resists energy fluctuation that is correlation among the particles what gives rise to energy fluctuation what controls it also this correlation so specially heat has a representation in terms of this kind of this kind of quantities ultimately so experimentally i can get that so now my aim if i can understand how this structure comes and then i can then subsequent to that i can attempt to explain bhale rule and i can try attempt to explain why argon goes to fcc and sodium goes to bcc uh those are the things then comes like that okay now next slide will now start uh, probability so <laughs> the concept why i said that i'm not going to give <coughs> one I, i wanted to give one more examples but i'm not going to do that <clears throat> basic idea then in order to structure of a liquid which is a, a, a random random system random means it is not crystal uh, <coughs> giving one position of one particle i cannot tell the position of all other particles but i can talk a probability and i can talk the probability is more than uh, constant if i go long far off then what is the probability of having one particle and another particle here that just a density so this correlation that i am talking of get washed out it just don't i don't need it and it's not there but in order to describe solid formation or or the properties of liquid it is this property that gives the solvation properties that the one thing which i did not at all forgot to discuss last uh, lecture is the one major thing of statmac is the chemical kinetics understanding why systems isomerization happens the way it happens and what is the rate why electron transfer reaction which is the main thing in your body well drives many of the enzyme kinetics and many processes uh so this uh, electron transfer reaction is very much tied to these kind of uh, structures in liquid and we need to understand this kind of correlation into describe a theory of most of the things uh in that part into liquid solid and uh, so but so the basic idea then that we need probability we need the probability to talk of correlation and the term that comes in is called conditional probability and we'll now discuss those things one by one <coughs> but you have to read 
and you have to read and you have to read and they are wonderful and I can say you won't be disappointed. My most favorite book is here is the Kailai Chung. This is the oh, oh, oh. where is Kailai Chung? Oh yeah. Hey, the, uh, I think I, I I don't think this is the one. The one Santana is the one elementary. This I think the graduate course. The one is Springer. This also probably Springer. Uh, there is a beautiful book which I have. Uh, once in a, in anger at a student, I threw it out the book. So the book is torn. But we have uh, we do mended it somewhat. But you can get it, and you guys are very smart, so you know how to get it. It's very famous. And this is a wonderful book. It's a lovable book. Again, no, this is not Sinajan. This introduction is there. Yeah, there's a the big book by Haken. He's a very famous scientist who should have got Nobel Prize. But then there are so many bright faces. Uh, Harman Haken. He wrote the introduction to synergetic. This is just just a beauty, you know, amazingly beautiful book. Okay, this is my favorite feather. All three my favorite. I recommend that you read this little bit of that. After reading four or five chapters of this, and you can go to this and this. You can before you go to sleep. You can, <coughs> this is really fast seven eight chapters of this. It's just just story, but. He talks of chance, probability, necessity, chance and necessity, and the correlations, all these things he develops beautifully. He's a very good, excellent writer. Okay. So you have to these three books. <clears throat> now, I have already worked on today's outline is that introduction and motivation that I already talked to you. I wanted to talk some other things, but I don't think we'll do that. Uh, definition of a random event I do now. Now, what is a random event? Give me an example. Don't disappoint me. Yes. Or 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 uh, or tossing a coin. Yeah. These are the two examples we'll stick to. Okay. So when we toss a coin, the we don't know whether it will be head or tail, or we throw a die. We don't know whether it will be. <clears throat> one of the six so when we do not know a priori the important thing is a priori what will happen we call that a random event okay now random event has an outcome now we can have all the outcome of the random event that called the sample space one of the things that we more or less deal with here now that by knowing when we toss a coin by knowing it's a head, next one is not influenced by head. We don't know what is the next one. Similarly, throw a die, we don't know what is the next one. Okay. Uh, right. So, this is called uncorrelated event. Huh? So, this is very important. So, I gave you examples of random events. This is important, the sample space. Sample space for toy, uh, throwing a, a, a coin is head or tail, HT. Sample space for throwing a die is one of the six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I, so this, giving the sample space, what I need is the measure of this uh, sample space, which I call omega. So now I define a probability of an event Probability of an event E uh, or probability that my random variable X has a value X is the measure of X and some measure of sample space. You have done Venn diagram, right? Total sample space is here. <coughs> yeah. That is the sample space. And then if your <coughs> event is here, the probability is essentially area by area, right? So it's the same thing I'm doing. So now, here my measure of the two. So with that probability of getting head or tail, 
is half. Simply getting any number, you throwing it i is 1 by 6. Okay. So, important thing then is the able to define the probability. Hmm. And this is the way defined such that when I sum over all the possible outcomes, it should be 1. Okay. These are the things you have learned in your class 12, I think, right? Somewhat detailed. So, definition of probability is done. Now, what is a joint probability? Joint probability, let me see the, I, doing two experiments together, I am one time throwing a die, and another time I am tossing a coin. Now, I say, what is the probability that I will have hate and I will have 5? What will be the probability? Half into 1 by 6. 112. So, now sample space suddenly becomes much larger, right? Joint probability sample space now 12. And you have H6, T5, all these are outcome. So, probability now depends on outcome and uh, the measure of the sample space. <coughs> now, very important is the conditional probability. Conditional probability is that if I give you one that I got in a joint probability, I give you, I got hate. Then what is the uh, probability of getting five or anything on it, throwing a die. Now here, getting a, uh, they are completely independent events. So getting head or tail or is not influencing that. So joint probability then knowing that I have head, what is the probability of getting one is just one over six. Because knowing this does not uh, the other. However, there are many times where they are strongly correlated. Like in the room, two <coughs> friends always sit next to each other. Many times, there is a correlation. That means knowing wh where one guy is sitting, I will be able to tell where the other guy is sitting too. So that is the correlation and that is given by conditional probability. So the example I was giving here of having one argon molecule uh, atom here and probability that other one one there there is a correlation and condition probability not density because if they are uncorrelated that would have been just density what would be if they are very far off density is n by v the uh, probability of getting a particle in uniform but now there are correlation at short distance because the molecules are interacting so, one molecule tends to be surrounded by many other molecules. So, the peak that you see in this uh, structure factor is representation of that. Mm. So, there is something connected with that which is called radial distribution function which, uh, which is essentially this, 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 uh, this conditional probability. That is means the, what I just told, SK is Fourier tensor on radial distribution function. We might come back to that later. So, this is the elementary basics of probability. Then we will do one important thing, which is central limit theorem, and uh, with applications to statistical mechanics and all uh, these things. Okay. So then, I let me go through the motivation part a little bit. Not statistical mechanics motivation, but probability and statistics that um, the, 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 you have this many molecules as I described, this many degrees of freedom. So we cannot do Newtonian description as I said, okay. And as I said, Maxwell was the first to employ these things. And uh, now, uh, two things that come into, uh, okay. Two things that come into picture now, which is what I have here, is the same thing I already said huh? okay so two important concepts or three important concepts that come now so in in my case i have a 
discrete variable and uh, so I want to define an average value of a quantity x. Then that would be sum over the value xi and the probability of p xi. This is the average of all the things. That, that gives you the anomalous result in the probability of having if you uh, head or tail, you will get it half. That is because you try to make something continuous, which is not. Okay. If it is a continuous variable, like for example, the height of almost continuous height of the students in a room. Hmm. Uh, what is the average height? Then average height I will get by integration sorry, H, H. Right? Okay. Now, after the average, so this is the law of definition of average, I need the uh, definition of variance. What does variance gives us? Right. And how do we define it? X square average. Yeah. H square minus H square. And uh, this is variance and the standard deviation is root of that. Okay. So that gives you A, A of that. Now, I already told you these are very important quantities because in case of, if we know the energy of a system, then variance gives you the specific heat. And these are magic, magic results of statistical mechanics. And the volume fluctuation or volume variance in, 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 in an experimental system, what happens if you have a glass of water here, which seems like static, but if you now do an experiment, which is the following experiment, and I have water up to this, colored water, which comes up to this, this form a meniscus here. Now, I can uh, put a microscope here and I can uh, look at the position of this, this thing going up and down. That will be connected with the pressure uh, on this and the volume that is fluctuating. So if I get this fluctuation, I can plot it. What I will see? It is not static. I will see it is going like that. This fluctuation, this seemingly simple experiment gives you an idea of the compressibility of the liquid. Similarly, it is very easy in computer simulation that because that's the first thing one does, a kind of simulation that you prepare a sample at constant temperature and constant volume and then you find the energy continuously fluctuating with the time. This is time and this is the height. A length this 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 uh, the energy will be fluctuating like that so these are the uh, most uh, what did I keep now my year okay here so these are the important things and I have already covered that the throw of dice and uh, uh, tossing of a coin unbiased coin <coughs> now as I said, these are the discrete, but sometimes we need to have the continuous random variable. And for example, you know, a random walker, and the standard example of random walker is somebody drunk a lot after and passing an exam or filling an exam. And then you take, uh, and this was quite a uh, common thing in, uh, in the way in the US, where under, if you have undergraduate students, they, after exam, they would do that and you can see, and I once tried after a little bit of alcohol, that whether I can walk on a straight line, I found that no one doesn't apply to me. I could walk. So, so distance travel at a given, uh, during a given time uh, is random. And these are the <coughs> important day. And then the pressure of a liquid, the one I do, do I, there. 
uh, number of nearest neighbor, as I said, it can be uh, uh, between 9 and 13. It continuously fluctuates. That's a very, that's give the weight of the radial distribution function. That has another very important quantity. So, so standard deviation, I told you, is the, 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 this quantity is the very intrinsic property of a system. Very important intrinsic property. If it is for thermodynamic property, then you call them response functions, which are specific heat and compressibility, dielectric constant, all those things. Even in the probability, defining probability distribution, this is a very fundamental quantity. So, you can see how very elementary probabilistic concepts, element like variance, average, fluctuations, they are very uh, trivial at the level of probability theory, but they have a very profound, uh, unexpected consequence in understanding our uh, statistical mechanics and that these are derived, you know. Uh, I, I don't, you don't have to believe me what I'm telling, but we'll derive it later. Mm. So, as I said, uh, sample space is the collection of all the outcomes of an experiment. Then you throw dice, six and all these possible outcomes, okay. Then the uh, probability distribution is now defined, one can construct. So, the way we construct a probability distribution is by forming a histogram. Like for example, I want a probability distribution of the height in this room, of, in, in, of this, some 25 or so students here. Then I'll go and measure the uh, height of each of you. Then I'll want to plot a, a distribution P versus H. How would I do that? How would I construct a probability distribution? Please tell me you have done that. These are one of the experiments they we should do in high school actually. Fifth grade, sixth grade, we can do these experiments. And it actually is done. Because the way we teach are actually in the books, but you should be taking students to field. The way they do that, they take them to a field and then you they look at the frogs and look at the things and they uh, find the distribution. How do? So define different class, classes of heights between one. Yeah, that's called greed. Yeah, that's called greed. So let's see if the height here. I hope everybody between five and six. I believe so. Now I divide five and six into ten grids. Five point. So I need a small grid. Means this is a very important thing. The grid that you will do all your experiment in, in those who are going to do experiment or theory. This is something you will do again and again. So, height, how do I do now? I make it between 5 and 6, okay? Now I say divide into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. I, I, I squeeze them a little bit later to get it 10. Huh? Now, I find out how many there is between... 5 and uh, 5.1, I uh, say there are uh, 3 of them I put there, then it may be a little bit more and then around 5.6 or 5.7 there will be maximum, right, 5.7 or 5.8 maybe whatever, but if I have a very large number, this is, uh, I can then uh, get, I can get kind of a smooth <coughs> distribution. So the way you construct the probability distribution is you go, either you calculate or simulate or measure in the experiment the values, put them in a histogram and then construct the number. This is the standard way of doing you know, the game that statistics play and these, are people, these days people form an Excel sheet and you know, amazingly common thing that people do in IT industry and in, in pharmaceutical industry, where right, they need to find out what drug, what is selling, what is that, so they, they always form a distribution. Okay. Now, in a continuous case, we take a value between uh, x and dx, then we integrate, then we have to now get the probability distribution of dx. Now, one very important distribution is the Gaussian distribution. 
Uh, fortunately for us, we already faced it. That is in a in vessel distribution. Right? It is a Gaussian distribution. Now, you know, uh, see, Gaussian and probability and Maxwell will come so many times and Boltzmann. Have you, do, do you guys see the, uh, have you seen this famous TV serial Big Bang Theory? Yes. Okay. In the Big Bang Theory, uh, do you remember the episode, which I think one of the best, other than when Sheldon goes to jail, the, uh, where uh, Sheldon is teaching physics to Penny? Remember that? And uh, poor Sheldon was trying the one warm summer evening, people looking at stars and all these things. So every time he started to go back, <laughs> started to teach, he would start with that line. And repeat it, and uh, last time Penny goes like this, okay? So in, 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 in statistical mechanics and probability distribution, we again and again go back to Maxwell. That one, uh, one summer evening, Maxwell wrote this distribution function. Now, can, do you know why? There's a very nice uh, reason why not only uh, velocity distribution is Gaussian, but there are most of the distribution we face, like energy distribution, volume distribution, they are Gaussian. This is the question very routinely asked. Because they are normalizable, the function is normal. And that's an answer, correct answer, but not the uh, real answer. The distribution this is a very fundamental thing which you, I am not, I'm not, I don't expect you to know. This is something students learn in, uh, in the first or second year of their PhD. Uh, but yeah, except mathematicians know it much early. Uh, and, but it is so fundamental, I think this should be taught again a little earlier. <coughs> the reason is that when something is random and what you are measuring is a consequence of or sum of many random processes, independent processes, then the sum or the resultant becomes a Gaussian function. This is one of the most fundamental or the fundamental theorem of probability called central limit theorem, <coughs> which will come to that. Huh? I don't know whether I'll be able to derive it, but I'll show you what the derivation is. It's not a very difficult derivation. So, but however, talking of this, coming back now, talking of distribution, this is perhaps the most famous distribution other than energy distribution of uh, Boltzmann derived by Boltzmann, the most famous uh, example of it distribution and as we know the average velocity is given by that mm. and uh, what is the value of this no whoever wrote it put a minus infinity here it should not have been minus infinity but okay if it is minus infinity tell me what is the value zero good that because this is an odd function and this is even function, right? Good. If I have zero to infinity, then I am talking of speed. Speed is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. Then what you are saying, root 8 pi and all those things. Eh? Okay. But then we have a v square. We can calculate v square. Average v is zero. But we can calculate v square is not zero. What is the v square? Now. Then I make half mv square. What do I get? What is that called? One of the most fundamental things. There are too many fundamental things. I'm getting tired of fundamental, fundamental. Tell me, you all of you know that's the equipartition theorem. So the equipartition theorem essentially are embodied in these things and actually equipartition theorem is more fundamental than Maxwell distribution or they are almost equal putting. You can have equipartition theorem from other things also. So outcome of two events can be correlated or they can be uncorrelated as I was just saying, tossing a coin and throwing a dice, you know, if we do that, if they are uncorrelated, then joint probability distribution is a product, right? You know this, no? independent probability distribution that has been done. Okay. If they are correlated, that won't be the same. If they are correlated, that we call already the radial distribution function. That's why the conditional probability has such an importance. When two events, they influence each other. This is a very important slide. I already told most of them, but we are going through it again more systematically. 
if two events are correlated, then see this is the conditional probability that I get an outcome B when A is given. <coughs> Look at it very carefully. Now, if they are independent, then what happens to this? Then P A P A gets cancelled. Then your P B A got to just P B. That's what I told just uh, two minutes ago. That conditional probability. So when would that be not uh, going to be uh, just be when giving A, knowing A influences the value of B. I bias the coin. I bias the coin that head is heavy and head falls more than tail. Then knowing that a head has come, then probably the next head I'd be able to tell you a little bit more certainty. Radial distribution function or the distribution that I know one uh, position of the one molecule, what is the another one at a distance? That is because of correlation. And why correlation comes? Because of intermolecular interaction. Just like when two people are always together, many times there is a certain amount of interaction between them. Same in the world of molecules. And that's the intermolecular interaction potential. Okay. So, it is extremely important. The conditional probability is extremely important. And that is critical and central to the statistical mechanics. Because in statistical mechanics, we talk of correlations. Hmm. Okay. So, that's I'm saying again, the study of statistical mechanics essentially is study of different types of correlation among atoms and molecules. Okay. And quantum mechanics enters through the interaction potential. So, to some extent, they are complemented to each other, one needs the other. And in, in a low temperature solid, or to understand superconductivity or superfluidity, with Einstein condensation. You need statistical mechanics, but then quantum statement goes hand in hand. One talks of population of quantum particles. You know of both Einstein, both uh, statistics, Dirac statistics. They are used in the uh, solid state, heavy or low temperature uh, systems. So there is a correlation and condition probability are the same thing. That's why condition probability is such an important role. Uh, the important functions like it are essentially condition probabilities. Okay, now central limit theorem. I have a proof of that, but let me, before that, I hope this is okay. I don't particularly like this, but okay, let's see. See, when one teaches, one remembers many, many things. And uh, One will make these slides of this kind. And there is a little bit less dry. When you prepare talk, then there is a bit more thing. So, so teaching, but what I am saying is a little bit more than what is here. And it will be a little bit more flesh in it. So, this is the central limit theorem. Uh, is a little bit more than this, but okay, let's go with that. That I have a random variable, uh, a number of variable, random variables, x i, and uh, the n number of random variables, mm, and uh, and uh, the random variables means the variables which I do not have any information about before, and, and I now get this. Variables are uh, not correlated or weakly correlated. Let us say they are not correlated. Now I get the values of the random number and sum them up. And I call that S. I'm going a little slow because it is very important and I want to convey the right message. And let's see, I form a histogram of the sum. 
and then I integrate over the possible value of S, I get an average value. There is no problem, right? Then, hugely important hugely important uh, theorem, the center limit theorem says that if these random variables are weakly correlated or not correlated, then the sum is always the option. And it is exceedingly important result. You know these uh, uh, law of errors. Right? Undergraduate, we thought law of errors, doing the experiment, the errors spanning Gaussian distribution. Have you done that? And uh, the reason is that it was the cows who did this, the great mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss. And uh, there is a book called uh, E.T. Bell, who was a mathematician, famous mathematician. They are Bell polynomials. E.T. Bell has a book called Main of Mathematics. Please read that. And there, in that book, cover of the book, they have three uh, pictures. One is Archimedes, the Newton, and top of that Gauss. Gauss did huge amount of things. He's almost the father of modern algebra. And uh, of course, topology, many, many other things. And uh, he also formulated differential calculus though it was initiated by Newton. And they asked him, how come we do, did so much? He did so much. So he then said that that is because I stood on the shoulder of two giants. He didn't say what the two giants, but of course everyone knew the Archimedes and uh, Newton. So uh, this is the, now you see, mathematicians are not given to, we chemists say everything, everything is fantastic. Everything is great. Everything is interesting. Mathematicians are not given to give superlative at all. You know, remember there is a discussion. You, you read the Feynman's. You must be joking, Mr. Feynman. Have you read that? Yes, surely you're joking. Surely you're okay. <laughs> joking. Joking. There, he was at Princeton. And they used to go and have tea uh, and coffee with the mathematicians. And one mathematician, they were, disc they were intently discussing all the time. And Feynman himself of course you know he got put down for the, that price two to three times huh? he was a great mathematician himself so he could interface between physics and mathematics and being mischievous person as he was he used to go and hang out with mathematicians then he found when the mathematician talking they'll be always discussing they are taking their uh, a to uh, a class they are in the coffee uh, their discussion to the coffee one says the other said yes trivial then Anna said the next time, is it trivial? So everything is trivial. <laughs> so Feynman formulated the theorem. All things that mathematicians do are trivial. <laughs> okay. So, but th that, why I'm telling that story? The mathematicians are not given to saying anything very bombastic, very fantastic. So when they say central limit theorem, that's something very big. You know, that shows the importance of this uh, theorem in the 2D theory of probability. And really, it is the central to the entire probability theory. Now, there is a little bit more we can tell about the standard deviation. Uh, if I take one random variable, which is a continuous number, like the random walker, one walker, and I study his displacements over a very long time, then sum up how far the uh, drunk guy has gone or the poor guy has gone. And then I do that experiment again and again. Then I get the Gaussian distribution. That turned out to be extremely important result. Why? Because this random walk is essentially polymer. So polymer size distribution is Gaussian. And that is enormous important in material science and polymer science. That because, you know, there is a bond, another bond comes. Now that bond is same length, but it can be any place here. Then another bond comes. So this is essentially projection 
on say z-axis essentially random because it has the, 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 the uh, freedom that's why the that uh, and that I mean square displacement the standard deviation is called this you have uh, you might have done in uh, call radius of gyration and radiation gyration is connected to when you put polymer in a solution it becomes highly viscous the viscosity is determined by the radius of gyration okay so these are if, if, if many many fields like that not just mathematics in polymer but the reach critical phenomena reach of these simple probabilistic concepts is, is just amazing okay then again I talked again a total energy of a system is a sum of kinetic and potential energy and say it is uh, open to uh, environment then all the collisions are taking place going out and that so total energy sum of all the energies of large number of particles and though they are strongly correlated locally I can now divide the system into big big cubes or spheres now I say energy of this sphere, energy of that sphere, energy of that sphere. I place them sufficiently apart from each other. So the energy within this is more than the energy of interaction. And that is random. So then energy has the sum of many, many energies. <coughs> and then that energy is become, the energy distribution is the ocean. This has been known and been verified 1,333 times. Uh, and it is the exact. This is one of the things computer simulation has done. Okay, so and that is the specific heat. Okay, and so this is I I jump the gun. So this is the connectivity along the polymer chain. The distribution is a formidable problem. But however, what makes life extremely easy that this is just so into it. So as I said, these are projections, <coughs> and then ultimately the distance R is just a Gaussian distribution. This is an amazing result, very important result that you will start later. In so, theory of random walk becomes a theory of displacement or motion of a particle in solution. It is called Brownian motion, observed by Brownie, Robert, uh, Robert Brown, Robert Brown, but it was explained by Albert Einstein in his fabulous paper in 1905. That's why he, uh, Einstein is called the Theory of fluctuations. He also was the first to get his square root theory was Einstein. Now, uh, so the you can see so many different things. We are doing theory of uh, fluctuation of energy, fluctuation of volume. We are talking of a random walker. Uh, we are talking of the diffusion of a tack particle in solution, a colloid particle. What that Robert Brown did with the optical, those days optical microscope, he looked into position of the pollen and pollen he found like that. He was really perplexed. Why, why is moving? Is it alive? He did many experiments with dead, uh, no, this is not alive and he could know. Einstein said it is because of the collisions. And then Einstein used that to find out the size of the particle. That is one of the first yeah, uh, an Avogadro number, one of the estimates. Okay. Now, uh, now I will not fully go through, but I will draw your attention and how this derivation is done. This is from Wolfram. This I found the one of the best uh, yeah, of the uh, simple derivation if you don't want to go. Though I recommend you to go to that, but Wolfram has given a very simple derivation. So here is my random variables, capital X, sum over X then. Then there's a very simple derivation he gives showing that how the probability of X becomes a uh, Gaussian distribution and uh, and here is the, I think, the final result which is given. Uh, it doesn't came, didn't come because it is a screenshot, uh, but you can, uh, I recommend you and then he talks of moments. And uh, he might have proved it because Gaussian theorem, a Gaussian distribution has a one amazing one uh, uh, relation at the level of moments. So it might be a little difficult for you to do that. Maybe Kailai Chung has a better derivation, but I really 
I recommend that you do the derivation. Uh, I can give you one answer before and that one of the quiz will come on central limit theorem. So, to make you read that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, now, there are many distributions that we use other than Gaussian distribution. One is a binomial distribution. And binomial distribution is something you have read in your high school, right? Okay. So, binomial distribution it says that I again, I have a, uh, I do an experiment in time and an outcome has a probability P. Then what is the probability uh, that that n number of them, so total I experiment to n times and I ask what is an outcome uh, that happens n times, small n times. So this is the binomial power distribution and uh, u is 1 minus p, then the probability that you get a uh, result of each uh, experiment is uh, so probably obtaining exactly n successive out of successive uh, say failure and success. Uh, I have just two failure and success, one and zero. Then that probability uh, will be here. Uh, but 1 and 0 will not work because q is equal to 0. Uh, so, uh, so we have to take finite numbers there. Yeah? p might be 0 0.5, 0 0.8 and q might be 0 0.4. <coughs> if that is the probability distribution. In case of tossing coin, then half and half, 8 and 10. Uh, then p will be half, q will be half. And probability of getting, say I toss 100 times, 50 times to get head or tail with this formula, you see that. Is that clear? Binomial distribution you also have done. However, what is beauty of that, you can get now, you can sum up the probabilities from here and you can derive Gaussian distribution from binomial distribution. That is the one of the first, the way the Gaussian distribution is derived by Gauss. By probability books. And there's a Bernoulli, Bernoulli distribution, the success and failure. Hmm. And uh, again, the same kind of a thing is a limited form of the binomial distribution. The important thing here is that you have uh, uh, mean square distribution, uh, sorry, uh, standard deviation and similar things. Okay. So I already told the huge number, one is Brownian motion. This I should have done a little bit more. Uh, more, but we, I hope to do at least two classes on uh, relaxation phenomena, uh, diffusion, and chemical reaction. So two to three classes. So I'll do that at that time. So these are the huge number of things, just limited. It is about 2% or 1% of what one does in statistical. I already talked about protein, protein folding, I talked about protein DNA interaction. Uh, the drug DNA interaction, which is chemotherapy, uh, steroid interaction with the proteins. So whole, whole uh, medicinal science design of drugs is depend on 1950, 1960 work on statistical mechanics for people like others. And so huge amount of phenomena. In physics, it's very big. For example, our physics as a department has fantastic Statement group with Chandra uh, Das Gupta, Siram Ramuswami, H. L. Krishnamurti, uh, Rahul Pandit. Uh, they are world famous people. Mystery. So this is hmm? So I think. <laughs> so um, more or less, this is today but don't get up now because I have something little bit more to tell. So what we will do next and how this will be connected to that is that so I talked of averages, uh, averages or power distribution. Now the experimental things that we observe in the world are the averages and the standard deviations. I already told standard deviation with energy specific. 
and the averages are density, pressure, and these quantities, or any property, temperature. So, how do these averages come in? If we try to start from neutrons dynamics, then at the end of everything is this motion of atoms and molecules. And they are interacting. So, these are little complicated uh, situation that you have. So, what we introduce then, or it was done by Boltzmann and Gibbs, they introduced the concept what is called phase space. So, they went to the most general way possible. They introduced the concept of phase space. And the system's movement in the phase space was described in terms of trajectory. Then one describes the probability distribution in that phase space and averages in there. Then the uh, things like time average. So our experimentally observable things are the time averages of motion of atoms and molecules on this phase space. So next class we will define the phase space, we will define the trajectory. And then uh, we will be in a position to introduce what are called the postulates of statistical mechanics. And when you introduce the postulates of statistical mechanics, they are fantastic things, very interesting, where we continuously overlap with uh, classical mechanics. You can do the same thing in quantum mechanics, but we will keep it simple and do in terms of classical mechanics. So, you can talk in terms of position and momentum and atoms and molecules. From then, once the postulates are done, we will start the basic formulation of statistical mechanics, which is the ensembles, partition functions, things like that. Hmm. So, still there is a way to go. Today's lecture essentially to tell you that, that the things that we do in um, statistical mechanics are kind of probabilistic, they are stochastic, they will have a distribution like Gaussian distribution and we will talk of averages and standard deviations and uh, the examples. So, next will be phase space, trajectories and uh, more on that.